is from government resources. Over time, the formulation and implementation of policies and programs that can truly promote economic development and reduce poverty are systematically neglected. Finally, centralized power over resources is manifested in the sectoral versus spatial orientation of the government planning and budgeting. The Philippine Development Plan is organized by sector and the national budget is structured along sectoral departments. For the Philippine Development Report pointed out that instead of an integrated structure that factors in demand based on local geography, the national government is instead organized in vertical silos by sector or agency and within each agency by program. So failing to address the impact of geography to human development by defending the sector-oriented planning and budgeting system has curtailed human capabilities, delimiting living standard, and prevented market expansion. So in response to this, this is the weak government coordination, because actually real coordination or convergence, which we open up here, uh, it actually happens at the ground. So you can talk about the convergence at the, plan, at the planning level, but real convergence or real coordination only happens at a particular point or place, and that is at the ground level. So, and with a highly centralized system, it's sometimes very difficult to effect a real uh, government coordination. So, given this, uh, we have actually initiated government decentralization. In fact, the 1987 Philippine Constitution espouses local autonomy as a means to promote more responsive and accountable governance. Pursuant to the Constitution, the Local Government Code of 1991 was enacted. The code devolved certain basic services and regulatory functions to local governments. The code also vested them with additional taxing powers and gave them higher shares in the internal tax revenues of the national government. Also, pursuant to the Constitution, regional development councils were established to facilitate administrative decentralization, reinforce autonomy, and promote economic growth and social development in the regions. Finally, the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao was established in 1989. The Organic Act establishing the ARMM defines its government structure, powers, responsibilities, and function. However, a common weakness of government decentralization reforms from administrative decentralization to the creation of ARMM and devolution under the local government code is the failure to commensurately The RDC is supposed to serve as the primary institution for planning and coordinating all economic and social development efforts in the region, but it cannot lay claim to a regional budget. ARM, as its name indicates, is supposed to be a regional government with a degree of autonomy to effectively chart the development of the region on the basis of, it, of its unique culture and history. However, due to inadequate revenue-raising powers and financial resources, ARM has been relegated to an administrative agency of the national government that submits, the na annual, that submits to the annual budgeting process of the national government. And uh, local governments are considered more autonomous than ARM because they have separate budgeting systems that do not have to be subjected to the budgeting process of the national government. But the internal revenue allotment of local government is uh, formula because the, the era of local government is formula-based and automatically released to them. However, to the extent that uh, local governments are assigned greater expenditure powers relative to their taxing powers and are heavily dependent on national government transfers, which are widely perceived to be inadequate, local governments are also in the same predicament as ARM. Local autonomy is tiny by the limited amount of resources under the local government control. So to promote efficiency and accountability, there should be direct correspondence between the benefits and cost of public spending. The locality that benefits should also able to raise the revenues and pay for the benefits. This norm is difficult to establish, however, 
because the national government transfers the main source of local government funds are collected from the entire population. Thus, the failure to devote commensurate resources or revenue powers to the subnational level has perpetuated the common resource pool and its attendant problems. Uh, another challenge to the decentralization in the Philippines is the huge number of subnational or local government units, which can lead to a highly fragmented and inefficient delivery, service delivery. The Philippines, as this table shows, has the highest number and the smallest size of first-tier subnational governments. The first tier are actually the provinces and the cities that directly, uh, directly below the national government. So, um, and you see that uh, that um, the first tier subnational in the Philippines, consisting of provinces and highly urbanized and independent cities number 149, and correspond to an average population of 500,000, while Indonesia, which is much larger and more populated than the Philippines, has only 32 first-tier subnational governments, corresponding to an average of 7 million population. So the first-tier subnational local governments serves actually as the middle-level government linking the national and lower subnational government level. Um, the middle level governments consolidate the requirements of smaller, lower level governments and forward them for the consideration of the national government. They also serve as the medium for the downward channeling of resources from the national government. They coordinate with the lower subnational government levels to address the problems of spillovers and externalities. It is important for these middle level governments to be highly functioning because they provide counterbalance to the national government, which is expected to dominate the smaller and lower level local governments. And uh, in the case of the Philippines, the effectiveness of the first tier subnational government is diminished not only by their number but also in the manner that intergovernmental fiscal relations are carried out. Both the Organic Act, both the organic act for ARMM and the Local Government Code provide that the President shall exercise supervision over a lower, lower level government through its next higher government level. In practice, however, the national government deals directly with the lower local government and this is especially true in the provision of national government services and transfers to local governments. This practice not only weakens the authority of the first tier subnational governments over their component local governments, but also contributes to the fragmentation of government services, as in the case of the missing middle in public infrastructure provision. Furthermore, the practice of the national government directly dealing with lower level local governments and duly strengthens the bargaining position of the national politicians over local politicians. National leaders are able to bypass local leaders, especially in jurisdiction controlled by their rivals. They do this by using nationally funded programs and projects to solicit votes to and political support which is highly characterized by clientelistic patronage politics. Um, so what does um, federalism have to offer? Uh, according to Watts, he identifies the following common structural characteristics of federation. Of federation. Uh, two levels of government, national and subnational, that directly govern their constituents executive and legislative authorities formally defined in the country's constitution, provision of autonomy for the levels of government through proper assignment of revenue sources, representation of subnational government only through the consent of uh, and uh, institutions to facilitate intergovernmental collaboration for services with shared responsibilities. Some of the characteristics of federations, such as the assignment of executive and legislative authorities to different levels of government, 
are also present in unitary countries that have adopted decentralization, such as the Philippines. The notable difference is that the assignment of authorities or competencies in federal countries are mandated in their uh, constitution. And um, while unitary countries are, pro are, are this decentralization are provided in the, in the national laws passed by the national government. In fact, there's no single mo best model of assignment of competencies or to the different levels of government. But uh, there are certain principles uh, that guides the assignment of powers and uh, resources to the different levels of government. And among these is uh, fiscal equivalence, uh, which is necessary to achieve efficiency in the provision of government services. The basic idea embodied in fiscal equivalence is that all benefits and costs associated with public goods must be considered or, or internalized in the decision-making process of the government unit responsible for its provision. Uh, complementing fiscal equivalence is the principle of subsidiarity. Subsidiarity forms if it's a function, if a function can be performed by smaller and simpler lower level of government, that function should be assigned to that level of government. Uh, so, actually, the devolved powers to ARM and to the local governments, as provided in the Organic Act and the Local Government Code, are generally attuned to the principles and designs of federalism. However, last, uh, last one minute. However, unlike the structure of federations, ARM and local governments in the Philippines are not provided with revenue powers sufficient to consider them truly autonomous. Uh, so I think I should uh, end with a bit of uh, my time. Mm -hmm. Region 3, 12, and R. Yun yung hindi nakaka-catch up. And in fact, 
the disparities have narrowed over time since na implement yung local government ko. As I was about to say earlier, Unti Unti has been more critical perspectives about federalism. The University of the Philippine School of Economics said in a forum, if federalism is the answer, what is the question? A governor whom I shall not name said, Autonomy is of primary importance, federalism is just secondary. Imperial Manila versus dynastic countryside. This is from the Ateneo de Manila University School of Government. Then there are questions, is federalism poverty reducing or poverty inducing? Mas talaga bang mawawala ang kahirapan? Ano ang cost, budgetary cost of the shift to federalism? So, these are the questions we are trying to answer. We will not be able to provide all the answers, but we will try to provide some of them. If federalism is the answer, what is the question? Basically, that points to, ano ba ang gusto natin mangyari? What are the development goals? Development goals is really you have better service delivery, more accountable government, uh, and equity in development. That's the PD, what PDP level says. Economic literature actually supports that. That there are potential benefits that can be secured by adopting a federal form of government. This has been discussed earlier. Increased efficiency, increased societal welfare to the extent that you bring government closer to the people, to the extent that people will be able to choose the government that they like. Sabihin ko, masyado mataas ang tax sa kabila, lugar at hindi nagbibigay ng servisyo, pupunta sila sa kabila. Uh, kabilang jurisdiction, meaning another by grade, in other words. And then, greater accountability. The fourth promise of federalism is really that it will help address ethnic cultural conflict as it accommodates regional diversity. Now, if you look at those four potential gains, the first three are largely a function of decentralization. You can get that with or without federalism as long as you decentralize very strongly. The fourth, and one way of looking is that, at that is that countries with federal form are not necessarily decentralized in the same way. Germany, which is federal, is more centralized than Canada, which is also federal. But the Malaysia, which is federal, is in fact more centralized than the Philippines, which is unitary. Now, with regards to the fourth potential benefit, the adoption of the federal form of government does not necessarily prevent the breakup of conflict within states. One example that is always cited in the literature is the old Pakistan breaking up to the present Pakistan and Bangladesh. But this, we, we simply cannot say that those, those are uh, in this not exactly technical, but those are things. Now this is in distinction kanina. Ano ba pagkakaiba sa multi-tiered unitary at saka federal form? Ulit-ulit na to, sa federal form, the division of powers is written guaranteed in the Constitution. Sa multi-tiered unitarias, the system we have now, delegated yung powers. Now precisely because division of powers and resources between the federal government and states state governments are written in the Constitution, very, very important that the design of the federal form of government should be subject to careful study. Otherwise, bad design gets enshrined in the Constitution, making it more difficult to correct a mistake. Ang point siguro nito is the devil is in the details. 
Dapat alam natin, hindi lang enough na sabihin na mag-federal tayo, alam natin ano ba ang itsura ng federal na pinag-uusapan natin talaga. Now, if the objective is to propose some national autonomy and promote the potential benefits from more decentralized governance, the principles that guide the design of the fiscal aspects of the federal form of government, which I will articulate later, are just as relevant for the design of a more decentralized unitary form of government. Pareho yung principles. And the aim of those principles is to ensure that the FD and the state governments face the right incentives for an efficient, equitable delivery of public services. At the end of the day, naman ang gusto ng mga tao, na yung servisyo na nung nanggagaling sa gobyerno ay nakakarating sa kanila. Now, what is the direction of the reform? First, we, I, I argue that, this, that the design should be informed by lessons learned from the Philippine decentralization experience. What are the deficiencies? And I'm focusing here first, just really on the fiscal aspects. What are the deficiencies? In terms of expenditure assignment, lack of clarity, overlapping and at times unclear assignment of functions, ginagawa na ng sabi sa code, agriculture is devolved, may sariling programa ang DN, nagbababa ng pera sa babanas. People would sometimes say, Bakit binibigyan kami ng program sa rice? Eh ang aming tanim dito ay coconut. Di ba? Madalas natin maginig yun. Unfunded mandates. And what is the result of that? Relevant services are either not delivered or not delivered in sufficient quantities. In terms of cut assignment, nasabi na ni June, no level of revenue at all to me in terms, particularly for provinces. Napakalaki leer ng espasyo na binibigay ng local government to sa sarili uh, pag pagbubuwis, pagkolekta ng buwis sa mga local government. In terms of intergovernmental transfers, vertical fiscal imbalance, pwede natin itong nagbitinig, kulang ang pera ibinaba na local government code pag ikinumpara natin sa mga pangangailangan nila sa mga responsibilidad na binigay sa kanila. Inadequate equalization, anong ibig sabihin natin nun? Yung mga, may mga LGUs that get too much transfers relative to what they need yung iba naman ay kulang na kulang. Isipin natin, Metro Manila, ang laki-laki na nang nakukolekt ng nilang buwis kasi nandun lahat ang mga korporasyon sa kanila, pero nakaka-receive pa din sila ng ira. Too much reliance on block grants to achieve different grant objectives. Siguro dapat isipin natin, may iba pang mga design na transfers na mas buti, mas appropriate for other objectives. Some national credit finance, too much reliance on procedural rules to deter optimum LG uh, financing of local infrastructure. But take note, when we federalize, importante na mag-focus on some national government credit finance. Because if we think of the experience of many South American federal countries, yung pagkabangkarote ng kanilang mga state governments ay naging daan para sila ay uh, magkaroon ng fiscal crisis. Hyperinflation, low growth talagang sumagsag. Think Brazil, think Argentina in the past years. Now, I want to focus on another deficiency, which is the political economy. The legislative overhaul of the LGC is difficult. Ang dami ng mga proposals na i-amenda yung local government to. 
but all the time wala nangyayari. And Matsuda, citing Matsuda, sabi niya, Congress as an institution is cautious about expanding the resource base of LGUs. Fiscally stronger LGUs depend less on individual national legislators for financial assistance and hence would result in loss of political leverage for members of Congress. At yung sinasabi ni Jun Kalina, may symbiotic relationship between the congressmen and local politicians. Gusto ng Congress, nasa kanila yung pera para mang pwede nilang i-control yung mga local politicians. Now, let me talk of reforming the fiscal decentralization framework for pillars expenditure assignment, who does what, tax assignment, which level of government taxes what, transfers of national credit. Ang gusto kong i-emphasize dito ay apat yan, it's not so much kung ano talaga yung powers na nililipat mo, pero ang importante ay internally consistent yung 1, 2, and 3. Meaning, pag sinabi mo, eto ang powers na ibibigay ko sa subnational government, dapat natin siguraduhin na in terms of tax assignment and in terms of transfers, the subnational governments will have enough resources to fund the expenditure responsibilities given to them. And then number four, in credit finance, I mentioned ko na important yun for macro fiscal stability. So ito, suggested design. And in my view, ito yung pinaka maliit na pwede mo i- i-assign exclusive powers. Ito yung tibagan nila may nagsabi sa mga naunang speaker. Pag nag-federalize tayo, the expectation will be it as federal government and central government kasi ibibigay mo na yung ibang powers sa sub-national governments. So, we're saying monetary policy, currency banking, independent central bank. Exclusive powers of federal national defense, foreign affairs, immigration, international trade, interstate commerce, agrarian reform. I put agrarian reform there kasi redistributive siya. Hindi kaya igampanan ng individual state governments ang redistribution ng lupa. Exclusive powers of state governments. Supervision of LGUs basically mawawala ang DILG, police mapupunta sa state, fire protection, early childhood, water supply, waste management, road, etc. Exclusive powers. And then we have this long list of shared powers. Shared uh, from regional planning, law and order, education, etc., etc. What do we mean by shared powers? With respect to shared powers, it is important to articulate in the Constitution legislation principles that should guide the sharing of power. Hindi ito concurrent power. We are not. We, I, I think concurrent powers is confusing. It will re, uh, redound to overlapping functions in the end. What you want is to be able to say, kunyari, education, sasabihin natin, education, ano ang national job? pag-design ng curriculum, pag-determine ng school calendar, um, etc., etc. Ano ang local goal? Actual delivery of the service. Take the case of road infrastructure. Ano ang national goal? Again, pa policy, standard setting, the, the, prime, the construction and maintenance of the primary national road. Meaning yung mga roads, the, the road backbone, the, yeah, the road network backbone that runs from north to south, pero yung secondary roads, secondary national and tertiary national, pwede na yan sa state. Of course, provincial roads sa baba pa rin yan. So yung ganong klase dapat ilalatag mo ng malinaw, 
Otherwise, pag sinabi lang natin shared, tapos concurrent, overlapping ang mangyayari dyan. And then residual powers, dahil nanggagaling tayo sa sitwasyon na tayo ay unitary, if we follow most countries, residual powers would be the federal government. Expenditure assignment, I have made preliminary estimates. Tinginan po namin lahat, ang budget ng lahat ng agensya ng gobyerno. Inanad ang mga programa nila at tinignan namin ano ba yung ginagawa nila na ang beneficyo ay pang lokal or above the national ang beneficyo at alin yung talagang inherently national in scope. And we, this is what we found out. 50%, 54% of total NG budget net of debt service or 8.5% of GDP would still belong to the federal. SGs would get 45% of the national budget. These are tentative Tax assignment. Ang importante sa tax assignment is dapat na pwede natin sabihin ang mamumulita na dito ay state governments. And one of the proposal is residence-based sort tax on personal income tax. Ngayon, each one of us nagbabayad ng personal income tax sa national. Over and above that, we will allow LGUs or give a state governments rather the power to impose say 1% of taxable personal income of residents. We estimate that this will give you about 90 billion pesos. We will transfer the power to impose the motor vehicle user charge to the state governments. As we see ra naman ang mga daan, ay yung mga local roads, ay yung mga kotse at mga sasakyan sa lokal, that amounts to 13 billion. Pag napasa yung DRA, may additional increase. Okay. Can sa akin? Now, I'm saying we need to identify more SG taxing powers to ensure some degree of revenue autonomy. Kasi po, pag yun lang po ang ginawa natin, on the, in the aggregate, ang mga state governments plus local governments taken together will still be dependent on transfers uh, ng 80, over 80% dependent pa din. So that's, I feel that's not quite enough revenue autonomy kung ganun kalaki kung dependent. And these are just the numbers. But I want you to take note, sometimes people have this sense na, ah, pag binigyan pa rin ng more taxing powers, dalaki yung pera namin. Take note, so sino ang may pinakamaglaking makukuha? NCR 34A. Bakit? Nandun yung tax basis eh. Hindi natin malalabanan yun. Yun yung natural na mangyayari. And what that means is that you need equalization transfers, meaning dapat i-design yung transfers na manggagaling sa federal in a way na mas equal, addressing yung meaning, ah, mamadali ako, wait. <laughs> meaning na bibigyan natin ng mas madaming transfers yung mga state governments na maliit ang kapasidad makakuha ng tax, yung maliit yung tax basis, dapat mas marami silang makukuha, sasagutin ng national, and then need for bankruptcy policy and mechanisms. Dapat panisipan natin to, ito yung problema ng maraming South American federal government. Ito, cost and risk in shifting to federal form of government. 
dahil nagdadagdag tayo ng isang layer, hindi ako sure kasi kung makakabawas nga tayo no LG, no sandali na lang po. Uh, may another layer, may overhead cost. Ang, ang kinumpitan namin ng overhead cost, bawat state governments, kailangan mo ng governor, vice governor, staff, at saka operating expense ng kanilang mga staff. Dadagdag daw ang dami ng senators sa national because kailangan ng representation sa second chamber. Kailangan magkaroon ng legislative body sa bawat state. And dahil hindi ko pa nakita yung simulat ni John Hunaya, <laughs> nag-imagine lang ako dito, sabi ko, kung sundan natin yung organic act, three legislators elected by popular vote, etc., 812 for the entire Philippines. Kung yung kay Senator Nene, three elected by popular vote and three central, 1,356. Kung yung BBL model na nandun sa Kongreso ngayon, 2,380. Total cost in the it ranges from anywhere, anywhere from 33 billion to 63 billion per year. This is recurrent cost, hindi po ito one time only. Taon taon po nandyan yan. And it really depends on the size, number of the state, size of the and the size of the second chamber. Preconditions for success. Sabi nila, ito yung mga mas maalam sa political economy, para daw talaga matupad kung ano yung promise of federalism before that, we need to, be, to do this to peace. Reform party system, institutionalize strong political parties, walang turn to peace and walang palipat-lipat ng partido kung sinang mananot na presidente. Eliminate hard, high barrier to entry in political alina sa madaling salita, walang political dynasty. So, importante daw yun. Pag wala daw yun, kahit anong paganda natin dun sa federalism, mahirap matupad ang promesa. Risk in adopting federal form unless we have good fiscal equalization, widening of regional peace, regional disparities. Di ba pinapin natin sinasabi, gusto natin manaro yung disparities. Pero dahil talaga pinakita na ni Judy, nandun na yung GDP, yung mga tax base, nandun talaga sa NCR, at saka 3 and 4. Dapat ikontra natin yun with fiscal equalization, strong fiscal equalization, accountability may weaken if there is no revenue autonomy without preconditions, likelihood of elite capture, and finally, sabi nila, kahit lahat daw ng technocrats sa Pilipinas, nagsama-sama na at nagkasundo sila, ay, ito ang best design. Best design, di ba? Dinala sa Constituent Assembly, Constitutional Convention, kung ano pa man ang gagawa ng bagong Constitution. Tawad. Likelihood is high that the initial model will be changed to reflect the particular interest of the actual framers of the Constitution. Alam natin lahat ito. Reform Bill. May draft na bill ang the Department of Finance, dinala sa Kongreso, paglabas, water down. At paano na water down? Kung ano yung interest ng mga congressman. Di ba? So, isang issue yan. Dapat expect natin. So, conclusion, two options to choose from shift to federal, reform fiscal aspects of LGC, who are the decision makers, the political leaders, you and I, all of us. And how to choose? Ito po, we hope that the presentation 
has given you some insights kung ano yung dapat natin tingnan. We, are, we have to weigh the relative net benefit, meaning benefits less cost, of the two policy options. Ikumpara sila. And then, i-assess din natin ano ba yung probability of success. Yung una kong natutuhan na sa Statistics 101 is pag merong uncertainty, yung expected value is yung actual value less times the probability, ba? So, yan po ang dapat natin tingnan. Meron po kami mga nabigay na konting numbers, pero yung iba po ay will have to depend on our own personal assessment. Maraming sa dapat po po dyan.
Now, some of my observations which are uh, rarely uh, taken into account in most of the discussion about federalism is this. Uh, oops. This one. This is uh, a lot of uh, researcher and discussion. Uh, I mean, um, this local executives are seen as dispenser of funds rather than taker making them worry of assuming fiscal responsibility in tax collection. Now, this is a very important concept. It doesn't mean that you give power to the uh, state government, they will collect taxes. And for obvious reason. When, let me give you an example. When the BAT was amended to be increased, it was Senator Retko who actually pushed for it. And what happened is he lost the election. If you talk about in the Bank of Zamoro, the reason tax collection is very low is it, it's related to your possibility of winning the election. Now, if you are, let's say, for example, you have a federal system, and I am running for the governor of a certain state, I will not campaign to increase taxes, so I will be more viable. I will not campaign for that because the possibility of me losing is very big. So you have this vicious cycle where all political leader is unwilling to in increase tax collection even if they have the power because this is counterproductive in a political suicide. This is uh, one of the things that I, I see as uh, probably an obstacle because this is actually happening in ARM. Uh, if you go to Bank Zamora, a lot of local executives doesn't want to collect tax because if you increase tax collection, uh, you will not win in the next election. Now, uh, will federalism really resolve to accountability, efficiency, and effectiveness in governance, the public service, higher development, or down? Uh, my guess is, uh, as has been mentioned before, if you don't have the existing quality of uh, structure, no? yeah. uh, then it will not. Because what happens is you lose the power to check and balance. Uh, today, uh, the current system, if you have an earring, a uh, local executive, uh, bad governor, then the national government can reparament, assuming that the uh, national government is uh, good. No? But under the federal state, since the power is divided between the two, it is very difficult for the national government, the federal government, to check into the uh, bad uh, things that being done by the state government. So that's one of the problems. Because remember, federalism is you divide the power. Meaning to say the state and the federal government are now co-equal. Now, the national government, whatever the state government is doing, the federal government cannot interfere with that. So if there is a problem wherein the state government is bad, then there is nothing that the national government can do to correct that bad thing. No? Kasi equal na sila, equal footing. So that's one of the things that we should consider. No? Another thing is that when risk regions share their funds to others, notably national capital region and southern Tagalog, this is a problem. It has been mentioned before, so I will not discuss it. Uh, hopefully, they are good people, so they will share their funds. Now, if you look at the uh, the GDP per capita, this has been uh, seen. NCR is up there, R down there, so you have the disparity. So when you actually create a system, a federal system, equating all of these regions as the same and creating a, a same rule, then it's going to fail. That's why in the creation of the federal system, uh, it is very important that each one of these regions has its own uh, different rules that take into account the specific peculiarities and the existing political environment as well as, long as, as, well as the economic landscape. Now, when you look at the commercial data across the region in Mindanao, um, because this will be the basis of your tax collection, uh, the commercial data. This is 2011. This is the latest that I got. Uh, this is actually part of my paper previously. ARMM is very small, no? Compared to uh, Sambuanga, very high, and the Davao region is very high. So, tax collection within this uh, area would be quite different. So, what actually happened is you have this path dependency where a rich region will become rich and poor region will become poor. So the, the, the gap will actually widen uh, if you rely that on the state collection of taxes. Second is this a give and take. 
The red one are net uh, taker. No? Sila yung parang kumukuha sila sa national fund. Yung green is actually take, giving back, giving something. Now, the national capital region is giving a lot. Southern Tagalog is giving a lot. The rest is actually taking part from the national government. So in terms of sustainability, as we talk about federalism, only this two region has is sustainable. So this two region has to give it to the all other region. Now, you know, one thing that I really like is ARMM is not the biggest taker. <laughs> it's actually a big region. So in a sense, um, we are not the last because usually we are not the last. So meaning to say, this two region has somehow had to shoulder all the rest. But there is a caveat behind this. Uh, I'll tell the story behind this later on. Now, when I look at uh, whether is it really money that matters, I, I did a simple regression. This is based on difference and difference regression. Uh, this is all Mindanao provinces, no? It turns out IRA, okay, per capita, doesn't really matter when it comes to uh, change in human development index and poverty incidence. So it doesn't matter. This two thing, IRA, the amount of fund that a, a local uh, government unit is receiving, doesn't matter. What matters is the good governance index. How good is the government within the LGU? Because that is the main, uh, in this simple regression, no? uh, the, one of the main contributor in uh, increasing, po uh, reducing poverty and increasing human development. Okay, because of the matter in really, to a certain extent, it's not really the money that matters most. It's how you use the money. Uh, it's like, you know, a family, eh? Malaki nga yung pera mo. Hindi mo mag-gastos ka naman. Wala na may hiyari. LGU, kung binibigyan ka ng ira, binibili mo naman naman siya at SUV, wala na yung problema. Eh kung maliit naman yung pera mo, at least ginagamit mo para sa public services, it will be good. Now, in the shift to unitary, uh, what really matters is the transition period, you know, the, the, the unitary and federalism. How lagging provinces will be supported? Although uh, Dr. Manasan had uh, really made a good uh, comment and suggestion on this one, how funds would be distributed, how to prioritize region, who gets more, who gets less, and in fact, one of the studies that I want to look into if I have time is where wealth are created. No? Nakita natin that uh, the national capital region is getting a lot of money, but they do not create the wealth. Let me give you an example. If one company who had a hacienda or a plantation in Pukidnon or Maguindanao, they don't pay taxes there. They pay taxes in Makati City. So wealth are generated within the Bank Samoro, but taxes are not paid there because taxes can be paid anywhere. So most of them prefer to pay their taxes at their office in uh, Makati City. That's why the revenue in Makati City is very high. However, if you look into that, like JICA, for example, the company in Rile, they have a huge plantation in uh, Mindanao, but they don't pay taxes in Mindanao. They pay taxes in Makati City. So it's not how ta where taxes is paid. It ha you have to look into where is it created. And lo and behold, although I haven't seen a study yet, a lot of wealth is being created in Mindanao, but the taxes to that wealth is being paid in Metro Manila. Ultimately, when you talk about uh, uh, the move to any form of government, it boils down to the improved quality of governance. Does this system really improve the quality of governance? Because what we have today is actually uh, very, um, very paradoxical. Let me tell you some uh, the case of why is it very difficult to improve. No? The people who are supposed to bring in development and economic growth in the area is the very same people who doesn't want development and economic growth to happen. 
that was actually the major finding in my PhD thesis when I did it with uh, the ANU under uh, Professor Halfing. Now, that is a very, very scary conclusion. Why? Because if you talk about the Bangsamoro to a certain extent in ARMM, most of the local ex executives are not college graduate. They are the guy who is the toughest and who are those, no? Sila yung palaba. And they don't want everyone in their locality to become engineering doctors. Because once they become rich and they become uh, uh, educated, they no longer have a hold on them. So what they want to do is to maintain the status quo so that these poor people can still be dependent on them. This is the current existing system that we have today that in certain instances wherein the condition of the locality is very poor, it tends to perpetuate because the leader who is supposed to develop it doesn't want it to develop out of fear that he will lose power when everyone in his locality becomes doctors, engineers, or everybody else. Pag hindi na pobre, wala na akong power. I maintain poverty so that I remain in power. That is the uh, biggest problem that we have in terms of development, and that's the reason why poverty in certain areas keep increasing over time. Anyway, I will leave you with this picture because my time is up. And uh, move. <laughs> so basically, once the last picture is shown, I will leave the photo. <laughs> but uh, if you, uh, I'll leave you with a picture of what uh, federalism is all about. If the Philippines is a person, this is what it looks like right now. That is an ideal federalism. Kasi lahat ngayon nasa ulo eh, nasa Metro Manila. Hindi tayo makatayo and we look ugly. What we want to be in a federal, ideal federal state is to be that guy where every part of the Philippines is fully developed and contributing to national good. Thank you very much. Siya, no? Kasi, una-una, 
uh, iba yung acquisition of wealth. No? It's not equal, and therefore, papayag pa yung ibang uh, regions na to give in to other regions na medyo less in, in, ano, less in resources. So that's the major problem. But it was all already discussed na pwede, pwede naman tayo magkaroon ng equalization fund. Okay? But another problem with equalization fund, already mentioned by Dr. Natip, is that hindi lang pera yung problema natin. Ang sunod na problema natin is paano ba ginastos yung pera? Okay? And there are apparently several studies already conducted na medyo malaki yung binuhos na pera, especially sa ARN, pero hindi ganun kalaki yung development na nakikita nila. And they could not answer why. Ano yung problema doon? So it's not really a problem on how much money you have, but how did you use the money and where did the money go? Saan napunta yung pera? Okay? It's not merely, meron ba kayong pera? So in, in our discussion on creating this new federal form of government, siguro kailangan din natin tingnan yung kultura no? and yung sistema doon sa locality kung ano ba yung, paano ba na ginagamit yung pera. Okay? So that's one problem. Another problem is that since medyo centralized tayo, we usually follow the ways of the central government. Uh, in fact, you notice that when, when President Duterte ran for president, halos wala siyang, ano, wala siyang political machinery. No? Sabi nga namin, no, kailangan niyo talaga maging creative, maging alternative, para lang marinig siya ng mga tao. Okay? In fact, yung pag-umura niya, yung, yung the way that he was actually shown in social media was helpful for him. No? Very controversial, kaya pinag-usapan siya, even without that big machinery and that big money na gagamitin for campaign. Except for, of course, um, Senator Cayetano, this is um, supporter, uh, kasi wala siya siyang choice. <laughs> wala siyang presidential candidate. But anyhow, yung problema is ganito. Yung mga local leaders natin, as mentioned earlier, would really look up to national leaders, especially for fun, yung mga local. So tingin sa national leaders, especially in Congress, pero yung Congress naman natin, you would observe, would follow the president. Okay? Bakit? Nasa, nasa presidente ba yung pera? No, it's Congress who makes the budget. But, the president has the power to release. So there's a big difference if you have the budget, pero ayaw i-release ng presidente. And that was the problem during the time ni Pinoy. We have money. Ang problema is, natatakot si Pinoy mag ng pera, baka mauwi lang sa corruption. So the end result is, there was actually, you know, um, surplus in the note budget. No? Kasi nga, medyo hindi tayo gumastos. Now, that would be a problem. Kung masyado tayong centralized, as mentioned earlier, ganun din, no? um, development will only be limited to those areas na kung saan medyo malakas. Okay? Yung local leader, doon sa national leader. And in fact, kung magkakaroon pa ng problema, for example, uh, we have this experience na in the middle of a long highway na may rice field on both sides, rice field on both sides, biglang may tumayong overpass. So, ano nangyari? Right? Yun, nakikita kasi, nakikita nung may, may meron pa lang nangangarap na tumakbo in that particular area and naghanap siya ng, ng national leader na pwede mag-fund nung kanyang pangarap. Okay? And you notice, no, saya niyo yung pera. Okay? Anyway, so, first, equal distribution of resources, it's not only a matter on how we get the money, how we distribute the money, the more important thing is how do we spend the money wisely. Okay? Second is on the maximiza uh, maximization of resources. May mamadalo kasi mabilis yung time sa likod. Maximization of resources. How do you maximize the resources? Especially if you are the, the if resources comes from the locality. Okay? So kung ikaw yung local, ano, yung, you, the, the resources will come from you, syempre no, you have to make sure that these resources will not be put to waste. Otherwise, kayo lang yung affected. In a unitary system, especially if we talk of uh, tax, di ba? Pag naipo na yung tax, yung na-mencho kanina, yung ilalagay na sa isang pool, and ano, uh, kukuha na lang doon, yung mga different agencies, they don't care where the money came from. Wala silang pakialam. Ang importante, may pera dyan. So how they are spent, they don't care. Eh kung, pa, eh, kung nagaling yun sa isang lugar, hindi natin alam. At kailangan na kailangan talaga nila ng fund, pero they are not politically inclined, they are not politically aligned with the present administration, then there's a problem. Okay? So, hindi nila na ma-maximize yung kind of resources because they are not connected to the central office. Okay? And of course, yung number one and number two will ultimately end to the reduction of poverty. 
So if we have the proper projects, we distribute resources uh, wisely, and we have the proper projects, well, ultimately, it will rebound back to the services of the people. Okay? Not by overnight, but no? by development, no? by education, ultimately, it will rebound back to the people. Now, connected, no? kasi namin ating fiscal, connected yan sa governance. So, another um, advantage already mentioned by the two speakers earlier was actually on the efficient uh, distribution of, or efficient um, delivery of services. The problem with the centralized government is, is that napakalayo yan. Okay? Napakalayo yan dun sa ibang lugar. Ilang, ilang islands na Pilipinas? Of course, 7,100, pero yung updated ay 7,400. Now, with just one head office, okay, one head office, it's very impractical, okay? it's impractical that the power is only from one area na i-distribute mo dun sa napakaraming island sa Pilipinas. Okay? And the result niyan is that the central government is insensitive to the plight of the rural marginalized. And the result niyan, services is very, very slow. Okay? So look what happened with the, I call it the Yolanda province. Kasi yun, dun, dun na lang sila sumika. Okay? Anong nangyari sa kanila? Two years after, ano, ganun pa rin. Bakit? Ang tagal, ang layo. So decision, bukuha ko na ng data, babalik sa central office, sa office design, ibabalik. So medyo matagal. Okay? In federalism, the government is closer to the people. Fiscally, closer to the people. Kasi nandito na yung decision making within the locality. Therefore, med medyo magiging efficient. Second is that the, the, the local leaders is some federal form is more sensitive to the cultural aspect. Okay? Alam nila kung paano kailangan ng isang lugar. Kasi nandun sila. Um, it is impractical that people in Manila would decide on what will, they will do in the provinces na hindi sila nakapunta sa province. So nandun na yung taga-decide, pero yung problema na mapupunta sila dito, end result is hindi hindi magkatugma yung, pro yung programa doon sa pangangailangan ng tao. Okay? So, I, I heard a lot of um, studies conducted, especially sa DOH, na iba yung, iba yung pangailangan ng lugar, okay? at iba naman yung services na dinistribute o na dinilibar doon sa lugar. Okay? Then, obviously, stabilization of politics. Okay? Um, hopefully, no, uh, when, we have, uh, when we have this federal form, and one of the uh, prerequisite now, uh, according to some, is that dapat mawala na muna yung mga political dynasties na yan. Because that will be a problem later on. Sa uh, uh, accountability and transparency. Bakit? Kasi when we empower the local the, the, uh, the local government units, that means we also empower the people. And you empower the people, what if it's a regional warlord or it's a dynasty? So you empower the dynasty. The end result is you don't actually get uh, better uh, better uh, value for your money. Kasi iikot lang doon sa pamilya niyo. Okay, so that will be the problem. Um, it will stabilize politics. Kasi uh, one of the pre prerequisites na nila is mapasa itong political anti-political dynasty and anti-terpotism. Okay? And but there was one suggestion which was very, very good. Is that um, we already, uh, they are already planning on actually funding uh, political parties. Okay? And I think uh, that was one aspect that we lost uh, during the democratization process natin, okay, we opened up the, the floodgates, so lahat ng gusto okay, BI, then may dalawa siyang assistant. Before kasi, we allow na yung isang assistant is coming from the majority party. Yung the other assistant is coming from the minority party. Therefore, if you're running, if you're running in a, in a position, you would rather run for majority or minority so that your votes will be uh, protected, di ba? Ngayon, wala nang ganun. Kasi, teachers na yun. So, what you do is that if you want to run, make a political party, um, hire uh, polling, uh, poll watchers, okay? and therefore, you can run for a position. So, naging magulo yung ating uh, political arena. No? Uh, naging unstable tayo. Third would be transparency and accountability. So, mahirap kasi sa, transparency, sa accountability to sa national budget natin ngayon is that sabi na natin, we don't know where the money came from. May gumagrasos na lang. 
Okay? And yung, yung, yung gumagasas niya, we usually have the approval of the present administration. Okay? And the present administration is used with the most powerful. Okay? Kaya wala pong makontra. The problem with that is, and notice naging, naging threat na siya, that every time someone steps down from being president, kinakasuhan natin. For some anomalies, kasi wala silang ibang maturo. Okay? Kasi may general, ano lang, ano, may general uh, cloud of authority lang. Okay? So, every time na, uh, like, um, ki GMA yung uh, pork barrel, ngayon ki Pinoy is that. I don't know kung kakasuhan yung si President Duterte when, when he steps down. Okay? So, the problem with transparency and accountability. In federal form daw, medyo malinaw siya because local na lang yung fund mo. Okay? Since the fund is from the locality, therefore, if you are from, if you are a constituent to that locality, you want to make sure that your money are well spent. Hindi siya malalakaw. Bakit? Kasi kung may magnalakaw, kayo lang ang apektado. Not the whole country, not the other states. Kayo lang. So you want to make sure that your money is protected. Diba? So, meron no uh, transparency and accountability. Hindi sa akin, nagbili na yung pagkos. Hindi ko sa likod eh. Okay. So, cultural, uh, actually, I will discuss it, I will discuss it kanina uh, about cultural diversity, self-determination, especially in Mindanao, um, the problem of historical injustice. Uh, we actually did a book, we, 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 we did a book, uh, came out last May, and we were able to actually establish that there were actually Sultanates in Mindanao who were considered as sovereign states, primarily because they had treaties with other states. So, it means that they were actually recognized as a sovereign state. Okay? Then lastly, government is sensitive to local circumstances because they are already here, they are near to the people, and they can address their problems efficiently. Now just questions, okay? Same question kanina, can we afford this? Now, yung kung kanina, swear ito yung pinag-usapan, ito, infrastructure. Okay? So we have to establish new capitals, new buildings, new, new headquarters for our policemen. So can we afford this? What will happen to state governments with lesser resources? Right? Which was also answered. Right? Will putting another, ito, question ng mga businessmen, will putting another layer of governance make government services more expensive? Ang concept kasi nila, parang yung goods na binibili natin sa market, pag dumahan sa middleman, so they consider the state government as the middleman, pag dumahan sa middleman, therefore the product is more expensive. Okay? And are the provinces, regions ready for this infrastructurally? Okay? Infrastructurally. So do we have infrastructure? Okay? Um, not the infrastructure that the local government code is actually saying, but infrastructure as a physical infrastructure. Then, the last is how do we address warrior reset and the dynasties? Maraming salamat po.
paano po ba yun? Sino ba ba mag-approve na sila ako ng parin ba? Or at that level? Or will there be some, again, criteria pagka uh, if the project, as we mentioned, is related to the, in our case, we call it the intermodal transport uh, system, which is the, di ba, yung backbone ng ating economy, will be the national government. Then, para paano yung pagsababa, di ba? So, yun ang isa kong uh, question. Then, with respect to, di ba, yung borrowing, sabi natin, no guarantee or fail out. Di ba, paano yung mga may mga not so well pa na uh, some states or states, di ba, kailangan tulungan ng mga sa federal government at national government. Siguro yun na lang, siguro yun na lang. Other 
very distinguished speakers. I, I am addressing this question to all of you now. Um, what, uh, what is your opinion or idea regarding uh, if I use such use the term constitutionalized devolution of powers? Uh, what I mean, sorry, uh, is that instead of creating a new level of government, uh, instead of paying more governors or paying more uh, members of the parliament, why not uh, incorporate these powers in our constitution? There will be a charter change and devote these powers to our current local government units. Such a way there will be less cost and and the, the proposed, I think the proposed uh, creation of these uh, state governments would be anathema to the policy of the government, which is to streamline the bureaucracy. Can we start with Dr. Milan? So, clockwise side. I think uh, since Dr. has pointed out in uh, my other presenters, many of the uh, enhancement or improvements can be done through uh, effective decentralization. And that effective decentralization actually uh, can be through the local government code, enhancement of the local government code. Um, I think when we talk about federalism, from my point of view, uh, the major change that cannot be done through the local government code is really the rationalization of the existing government system, local government system. Uh, initially, I, I presented uh, uh, a table uh, where it showed uh, that uh, the highly fragmented local government system that we have. Uh, say, for example, the just in the case of the first tier uh, sub-national government, which are uh, the provinces and the highly urbanized cities, numbering around the 142. And uh, in other countries, uh, say Indonesia, which is much bigger than the Philippines, it has only like 26 provinces. And uh, if you devolve, uh, I think a major uh, limitation when it comes to devolving, uh, say, uh, more revenue raising powers like taxing powers, is the small, the small size of our local government system. For example, personal income tax. Uh, if you give the power of the, uh, to the local government, the power to impose a personal income tax. A major a major, uh, one of the questions that uh, will surface is, how do you impose the personal income tax? Uh, where the, uh, is it where, or from the uh, point of where the individual work, or from the point of view of where the individual resides or live? And if you have very small local government system, usually the place of work and the place of residence are two uh, separate uh, localities. And so there's a, a, big, a, 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 a big question as to which local government do you entitle the tax. And if you have a bigger local government, a bigger uh, subnational government, some of these problems uh, will be actually uh, removed. So that's why uh, the, the creation of regional government can allow for greater absorption of more uh, powers from the national government. But, uh, and, uh, but again, as, I think, as I've seen from the uh, uh, case of the ARFM, there's also a problem that we just leave the local government system as it, as it is, because as we've learned in the uh, ARFM, many of the functions of the regional government and the local government are actually, a lot, there's a lot of overlapping. So there's really a, lot, uh, a need to rationalize the assignment of uh, these powers to the, especially that we have so many levels of local government uh, that were potential that will be potentially created from this uh, from this uh, federal system. So that's why it's very important really to look into those assignments and see how the existing setup uh, fits into uh, an effective assignment of, uh, of uh, expenditures and taxing powers. Yeah, actually there's a big difference between the two when you devolve and when we do federal. Um, sa akin, no, simple term ko, when you do devolution, parang we're just sharing work. Parang kita tabaho. But when you do federal is that we share responsibility. There's a big difference. Okay? Uh, kasi yung difference, at the end of the day, sino ang magiging liable? So kung papasok pa rin tayo, kung everything will point to the central office, 
ibig sabihin, decision making power, saan doon palit sa central office? Nagtatrabaho ka lang. Okay? Parang yun na kayo ng trabaho, pero ultimately, the decision making nandoon pa rin sa taas. And sabi ka natin, that's a problem, especially here in some provinces and sa mga ano, culturally diverse na regions, that's a big problem. Kasi hindi pwede maging uniform yung mga policy natin because some of us are different. Okay? We have different needs and we have different uh, wants. Therefore, hindi pwede maging, maging uniform yun. So that's a big difference. So, yung, kasi yung, actually, yung presentation ko, apat yung tanong eh. Yung sunod na tanong is, um, yung problema ba natin ngayon is because of our current system. And so on, apat yan. Pero since we don't have time, tayo ko na kinawa. Uh, yung tanong is, ano yung kailangan ba ng if I want to interpret it? A limited a set of expenditure responsibilities ang ibibigay natin sa subnational, pwede na under a decentralized system. Pero kung ang naiisip natin mas maraming poder para sa subnational, kailangan natin ng middle layer. Let me give a case in point. Environment and natural resources. Forest management and development. The forest system, or, or river basin management, mas maganda yung city. The river, yung river basin kasi, hindi lang sa isang probinsya. Dapat mag-cooperate ang maraming probinsya. Mas malaki yung chance na yung yung isang river basin ay nasa isang state. So, pwede mo nang ilipat yun instead na lahat na national. Parang, kung tinitignan ko yung mga programa ng DPWH, may malaking-malaking chunk of money pag flood control. And then I was thinking, saan ko ba lalagay ito? Gagawin ko ba itong share? Gagawin ko ba itong national? Pag not knowing the contours, kung Kasi yung mga, yung mga flood management project, they transcend provinces. Marikina na ondoy. But the flood control management doon goes all the way to Montalban and even further. Same with Kamanaba. Same with Pampanga. And so on and so forth. So, may, may konting, may nuance yun. So, yung, yung tanong lang doon sa tax, gusto ko lang medyo i-clarify. Sa personal income tax po, pag nag-desert tax ang, ang state governments, the typical arrangement is place of residence. Uh, uh, basically, uh, hindi kasi pwede ka agad hindi bangas. There's a lot of power within, parang unfair siya eh. Take for example of a lot of GOCC and cost of taxation. No? Uh, malaki yan, nasa Manila naka-base. Pag-4, PCSO, kawawa naman yung ibang probinsya kasi parang magpupunta lahat doon sa Metro Manila. So we wouldn't have check kung ititipon mo lahat yung uh, power sa probinsya. Kawawa kami uh, na, uh, nasa periphery. Parang masesentralize siya. So there's a lot of problems, especially on GOCC. And so for us, siguro kami, sa Lanao del Sur, okay lang sa amin. If, if, we get the revenue stream from the National Power Corporation. That is a big gift. <laughs> Thank you. So I think we have 15 more minutes for the open forum. Yes, sir. Please. Be followed by the camera. Uh, I'd like to focus my uh, question. Sir, may we know your name? I am uh, I'm in Paso Mandai and I am an IP. I belong to the public right. And uh, I'd like to state also that uh, I am here per uh, invitation of the uh, Internet Development Program. And uh, I'm very happy na na meron ako binigyan ako ng pagkakataon na hindi at sa maki-conversation sa mga scientists kaya nila kasi ay pang from the street ng people in the street uh, ang sa akin no 
uh, especially your last speaker, perhaps a question of course, that I think will have to be answered by us. But there is a question I want to strike out. Now, <coughs> are we prepared for this uh, change? Okay. Um, ang sa akin lang ho, uh, kaya, kaya tayo na, na usap, why are we talking about this issue of liberalism? About shift to a new kind of uh, set up in governance, like what is provided in the future. And as we know now, there are four versions already of the PBL in Congress. Okay. Why are we talking about this? Public mayor. Because there is a problem. There is a delay more from the people. Na kailangan meron tayong change sa ating setup. And I'm referring to the claim of the Bagsamoro. Kung hindi, nag-aklas ang mga Bagsamoro, wala tayong pinag-usapan niya. Hindi na pinag-usapan niya. Pinag but because there is a need, ha? nag-revolution, nag-rebel ang mga Moro, for the last 45 years na, since 1968, nag-uusap pa tayo. And several uh, concepts in order to address the problem has been done even during as far back as Marcelo. revolution of authority, ginawa natin na yan, hindi na problema yan. Oo. But the concept of centralization and devolution is what we have to decide for. At yan ang ginawa ninyo. Kaya na yan. Oo, ako na marami ang pinaglaraman sa inyo. Eh, gusto kong malaman. Yung sinabi ni uh, yung structurally, ano yung ibig sabihin ng structurally? Are you referring to the infrastructure, the infrastructure project that we have? Sure, no, because America is a president. Yeah, actually both the physical infrastructure and the um, infrastructure of the government. Of oh, the government, right. Because uh, the physical there is not there. But the structure of governance is not there. Okay, clear. Secondly, secondly, the question is, are we going to address yung warlordism, uh, what is that? Warlordism and... Warlordism and dynasty. Yes, can federalism address that? And then, uh, uh, I mean, that was the question. Can we address warlordism and... Uh, ano yun? Dynasty. Political dynasty. 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 Political dynasty. Kasi problema malaki yan sa ating kind of system, yung unitary. Oo, problema yan. But sa federal... Uh, uh, government, federal system, like what is happening in Indonesia and Malaysia. Ang election is done by political party. Di ba? Hindi individual. Nasa party. Ang party ang, ang uh, ini-elect ng mga tao. Now, sino-sino makakuha ng uh, ano ito, yung number of votes, magtugmak pati yung representation nila sa parliament. So that, that uh, hindi naman, hindi ko nasabihin na that totally, oh, but that will address. Kasi pag yung election, tao lang, remember, yung election natin, ilan ang tao binotahan natin? More than 30 people. From president down in the last election. Na remember nito? Oh, yes? Na so, paano, how do you, how do you, how do you intelligently choose the kind of people that you want? Oh, so you're, you're what? Vulnerable ka sa mga intimidation, sa pera, kung ano. But federalism, kung magkaroon tayo ng election, if that is what is going to happen here, na by party system, insya ang lang, ma-resolve. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can I hear the, the comment of ours? Yeah, actually, federalism will not solve. No? Yun yung, ano, it will not solve. Pero yung, yung process into federalism, 
yun yung mga susunod. Kasi one of the prerequisites na sana natin gusto mangyari before we federalize is that unang-una, mawala muna yung, ano, yung mga political dynasty. Kasi nga, if we empower the local government, we also empower the dynasty. So una, mawala muna sila. So yun, one of the prerequisites daw is dapat mapasa muna yung anti-political dynasty law. Okay? Yun yung muna prerequisite. Pangalawa is para ma-empower naman yung mga political parties, i- i- hindi nila ay legislate din daw yung anti-turkutism yung anti-malimbing law okay. kasi yung problema is that masyadong destabilize yung ating uh, party system and yun yung mga prerequisites before we kasi hindi naman as mentioned by the speakers hindi naman talaga overnight federal na tayo it will it will have it will be a long ano long journey sabi nga dun sa press conference mga at least 10 years now okay. so yun doon, medyo na mag adjust tayo before we actually truly say na federal na talaga yung Pilipinas. Thank you, sir. Okay. Can we... Oh, there's still two more. And, okay, another one. Can we take uh, the question from the guy at the back? And then, with, with your indulgence, can we accommodate the last questions after this? Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I am Attorney Robert Rosales. I am from the... Uh, uh, provincial government of Sambongo. So I'd like to particularly address this question to Dr. Manas. I think you made mention about uh, a shift into a federal form of government is not without risks and costs. Now I'm thinking if we are better off if we instead focus our efforts at uh, instituting reforms in the fiscal aspects of the local government code in order to truly empower the local government Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sa war, war of the sea. So, uh, dito 
sa ating sa sa art karamihan ay warlord ganun kung sinong uh, malakas siya ay nakakaposisyon so gagawin din ng dito low sa anti-political dynasty ang um, uh, sa pa sa mga gusto kong uh, ipaabot yung education system po natin dito yung mga courses Uh, yung mga kabataan po, ini-introduce sa kanila ang karamihan ng mga courses ay yung pang-abroad. Kaya hindi na, abutin, hindi na nabibigyan ng mga seats o mga posisyon ng mga kabataan dito, yung mga brilliant potential ng kabataan. Dahil puro, puro pang-abroad yung mga ini-introduce sa atin na courses. Nursing, engineering. So tingnan nyo ngayon sa mga abroad. At saka sa abroad, karamihan, kabataan nyo doon. At yung OFW na income natin mataas, di ba? So, yan po ang isang punto namin. Uh, gaya po namin na wala mga uh, youth, wala mga sector po, wala po kami yung seat. So, kinapwestiyon po namin yung education system po dito sa atin. Thank you. So, let's give them the opportunity to respond to those questions. Para lang, ano? So, what type of federalism would you recommend? Yun ang... Ang sa akin, importante, once na klaro ang division of powers, kahit paano natin i-define, basta klaro, hindi masyadong nag-overlap so that accountability is very clear. In terms of taxing powers, enough local taxing powers so that mayroong mas malaking accountability. Nag-mention na na kanina na pag-dependent lang tayo sa taas, parang hindi tayo cost-effective yung basta at wala tayong pakialam kung may nangyayari pa rin. Then third, para sa akin, importante, importante yung equalization. Otherwise, lalo mag-wawire din yung disparity. Thank you, Pansha. Any comments? Um, any response? Yeah, I think uh, I have been so basically accountability and equalization. Uh, and that can be addressed through uh, proper uh, a clear clear and stable assignment of tax income of both uh, expenditure and tax Sir, there was also a comment in our education system. Perhaps one of you can answer that. Uh, ideal mo na pa. Sa, sa ideal uh, federalism, actually, it's a very uh, subjective and relative uh, way. Kasi what is good or what, it, it, it's something subjective. Uh, there is actually no ideal federalism. What is ideal is during the transition period. Uh, during all this time that I've been studying, you know, especially the Pangsamoro political system, the most important part is the transition system wherein you can keep a political dynasty in Wallerism. One of the ways to kill them out is by appointing technocrats to handle the management of one and relegate those who are elected in power to no longer manage the body. Because the cause of all evil when you come to this uh, political dynasty and all of this Waldorfism or private army, the one that feed them is actually the era. In all of its glory, in all of its talk about, it's actually the era that is causing us all the trouble. So if you remove the era, and uh, let it be managed by a technocrat for the time being as we uh, transition to the federal system, then this kind of people will die out naturally because they have no longer have any source to sustain them. Now, in terms of education and system, that is, uh, the reason is that, you know, uh, for obvious reason, that money attract brains. So our young sirs who are educated, they will always gravitate to courses that has the money in it. So it's, this is an economically motivated decision unless we can produce the job and opportunity within our local economy. There is no way of stopping this because this is economically driven. Parang you are trying to reveal uh, the supply and demand which is impossible to do. Yeah. Ako yung sa ideal federalism. Uh, tama lang, uh, sa kanya kung walang ideal federalism, walang perfect, uh, walang perfect federalism. Okay. Um, there are 26 federal states sa buong mundo that a single one of them are actually the same. Okay? Kasi yung federal form of government that they are establishing is something which is unique to their experience. So kung tayo, kung mag-idealize lang tayo ng federal form, it is 
something that will address to our experience. So, hindi natin kailangan tumingin sa ibang bansa at gumaya. Tingnan lang natin kung ano yung experience natin at ano yung kailangan natin. And since tayo yung gagawa ng federal form of government natin, we can address that. Ano ba yung mga problema na kailangan niya address? Doon tayo makoconcentrate. Now, regarding sa education, in fact, that was, that's one of the uh, uh, dilemma. Kung ang, ang education system ba ay, ay i-federalize or i-localize na lang. Kasi may maraming sa i-localize na lang daw so that yung education ay ituturo, yung mga subject ituturo dun sa mga bata sa isang local, sa isang state government is specifically addressing yung needs nila. Okay? Kasi daw kung, kung uniform yung education system, the problem is, like for example right now, how much about Muslim, how much about Mindanao history is in Philippine history? Meron ba? So yun, problem yun. Kasi nga, the uniform yun, the formalized nila yung education. Now, ang problem lang sa mga localized education system is that how do we get um, ano, uh, accreditation from international. Kung, kung meron tayong plano na pumunta sa ibang bansa at mag-aaral o magtrabaho, uh, how about the accreditation? Kasi localized yung ating education system. So that, that's actually the dilemma right now. Kung even federalized pa natin, kung yung localized.
should give us the, the complete picture, the pros and the cons, no? the merits as well as the possible negative effects of this, uh, uh, the proposed shift to, to federalism. After all, it is um, not, what is a state is not just our future, but the future of our children and our children's children, and the future of the Philippines. So, maraming po salamat. So, at this point, I would like to invite um, Representative from Milda, uh, Director